During the fall season, while you enjoy the changing colors of the leaves and the cool, sunny autumn days, don't forget to spend time with the Creator who has blessed us with the changes of the seasons. Read your King James Bible, and you can study along with us by visiting bbfohio.com and by listening to Bible Believers Fellowship each Saturday at noon and every Sunday at 9.30 p.m. on 91.5 Freedom FM. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship and the ministry of BBFOhio.com and part two of our two-part study in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 12, verses 18 through 27. The message is titled, The God of the Resurrection. This is Mark chapter 12, verses 18 through 27, part 2 of 2. Now, it doesn't say, by the way, it says we are as the angels. We're not angels in heaven. Um, at every funeral I go to, there's always a well-meaning person who says, Oh, the heaven needed another angel. So, you know, and uh, No, that's... Uh, God's not... There's no shortage of angels in heaven, you know. Oh, what do you mean we need another angel? Well, Mike, time to go. That's not comforting to me. When someone says that, I'm thinking, wow. Oh, watch out for lightning. Angels are not sexless. Where in that verse do you read that angels are sexless? But that's what they teach. You read books on angels, they'll use that verse and say, oh, well, they're not given in marriage, that means they're sexless. No, it doesn't mean that. Every time you see an angel in the Bible, by the way, they're male. Why don't they have female? Because they don't procreate. God made a certain number of angels. And that's it. That's it. He's not still making angels. And so you don't have anything to worry about. And there's a shortage, He's not going to come after you. <laughs> and... They simply do not marry or procreate. That's why they're not married and given in marriage. That's just not the purpose. So, in Mark 12, 26 and 27, he says, And as touching the dead that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses, Master Moses that they were talking about, how in the bush, the burning bush that the scholars say was just the sun shining through a, a bush that was real shiny, that's what they teach. That's what they teach. I'm just telling you. How in the bush God spake unto him saying, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. Now here's Jesus' commentary on that. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Hallelujah. Ye therefore, Mr. Sadducee, ye therefore do greatly err. See, the cure for false teaching is the Word of God. You simply read it in context as it was intended to be read, only using symbols when symbols are supposed to be used, taking it literally whenever it can be taken literally. When the plain sense makes good sense, then... Yeah, there's a... Wait a minute. When the plain sense makes... Seek no other sense. Yeah, there it is. Right. When plain sense makes good sense, seek no other sense. So that's where people get messed up. They read it and they want to make everything symbolic. And you ought to see some of the wild things people come up with. It just says what it says. He is the God of Abraham. When he said that, Abraham had already been dead for centuries. The God of Isaac and Jacob, they've been dead for centuries. But he's still the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob after they died because they died, but they went to paradise. And they were waiting for the fulfillment of the prophecies of the servant who would come and die for sin and be buried and rose again and then go into paradise and take captivity captive and bring them to heaven with him, which is what happened. We're going to see that. We're going to see that in a couple of, well, probably around Christmas time. We're going to be there. Jesus also said this in John 11, 25 and 26. He, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet 
shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? He said, wait a minute, everybody dies. Your body dies. The real you, the soul, don't never die. Double negatives are great. You are never going to die. Your body will go into a grave. Your spirit and your soul go somewhere. Your soul will either go into a place called hell at the moment you die or into the presence of the Lord. And then at the time of the rapture is when you put back on the body in a glorified state. If you don't believe in the resurrection, then you're actually saying that Jesus is a liar. Bottom line. Any of these teachers that deny the resurrection, they're basically saying that Jesus is a liar. And if you say Jesus is a liar, you are not a Christian. That's the bottom line. When someone sits up there and teaches this stuff, you're not looking at a Christian pastor. The Bible says that Satan's ministers are transformed into the ministers of righteousness. But they're still Satan's ministers. Look at verse 27 in Mark 12. Read that with me. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. And I want you to focus in on that last phrase there. Ye therefore do greatly err, talking to those Sadducees. It's not just a little error. Greatly err. To deny that truth is to condemn your soul. You cannot believe the gospel if you don't believe in the resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 says that the gospel is how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scripture and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day. Rose again the third day. Resurrection according to the Scripture. So you can't be a denier of the resurrection and believe the gospel. It's a contradiction. Now, close to 25 years after what we're reading, we're reading this in Mark 12, and it's around 31, 32, or I think this is about 32 or 33 A.D., right in there. We're, our calendars are off a little bit, so I try not to be too dogmatic. There's some room, wiggle room there, but we'll say 32 or 33 A.D. About 25 years later, the Apostle Paul wrote this in 1 Corinthians 15. Go ahead and turn there because we're going to close here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and turn to verse 51. So Jesus has confirmed for us that there is a resurrection. But this is why we have the epistles. Jesus told His disciples that after He departed, the Comforter and Counselor would come and lead them into all truth, meaning all the truth that He wanted us to have. So Jesus gives us the basic truth in Mark 12 that there is a resurrection, and then the Comforter comes, and Paul on his way to Damascus to... Uh, persecute and arrest Christians and take them back to Jerusalem. He's on his way there and Jesus shows up and blinds Paul and speaks to him and Paul is saved. And then Paul, after a few years uh, after that, he then writes a letter to a church that he f helped to found in Corinth near uh, in, in Greece. And so after he's, he's helped found it, he goes off and he writes a letter back to them and that's what you're reading. And 1 Corinthians 15, beginning 51 and 52, read that with me. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Praise God. That's the resurrection. Now that's what you're missing out on if you don't believe in the resurrection. But if you believe that gospel message, how that Christ died for your sins and was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, that's your future. That's going to happen to you. Read verses 53 and 54. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death 
is swallowed up in victory. Okay, we got to sing victory in Jesus in a minute. 496, I think it is. <laughs> Go ahead and turn there. 496 in the hymn book.
Be sure to visit our website at bbfohio.com for links to hundreds of audio and video messages, as well as articles, links, and other free resources, and a new bookstore being developed offering additional items. This message was brought to you by Bible Believers Fellowship. I am Pastor Greg, and we thank you for listening. That's why we read in 1 Corinthians 15, and I want you to read that with me. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. And that just means unless you've just flippantly said, oh yeah, I believe. There have been many people have a preacher come to their door, knock on the door, and say, oh, say the sinner's prayer, and oh, okay, well, blah, 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 blah. And they don't mean it. Listen, folks, you know your heart. I don't. You know your mind. I don't. And no one else does. But if you have not been serious with God and really believed the gospel, you're on your way to hell. You have purposely put a wall of separation between you and God because you've not taken this seriously. But if you will take it seriously and really search your heart and say, I believe. I believe this gospel. And what is the gospel? Read verses 3 and 4 with me. Here it is. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. That's it. You seriously, before God, believe that He died for your sins and paid the full price. He rose from the dead and conquered sin and death. And by that alone, you have eternal life. The Bible says you are saved. But if not, then not. That's how simple it is. You know, religion stinks. Because religion muddies the waters. Religion makes you think that, that church membership or having a title or something like that is going to help you in dealing with your sin. Let me tell you something. You sinned against God, not the religious people, not the institutions who are giving you all these false promises. You sinned against God and what He says matters. And if you sinned against God, He is infinite. Your sin requires an infinite payment. That's why you can't work for it. You can work your entire life and do the best you can and it's still finite. You can never do enough works to pay for the cost of sin. And Jesus dying on the cross was an infinite payment for your sin. And that's why He's your only hope. 